Hello and welcome to the Angular TDD course on Adonics. My name is Ilya and this is section 2, Theory and Terminology. In this section we are going to uh, lay some foundations and talk about some concepts that will allow us to write tests in the upcoming videos. So in this lecture we are going to talk about various types of tests that you may encounter. So testing is of course a very important uh, process, but uh, this whole field is quite vast. Because for example you can test uh, that your application behaves properly, that all the features are correct, so that your application fulfills their requirement. You can also test uh, your application's performance, or you can test for example application security and so and so and so. In this course we are going to talk about uh, automated testing, so we are going to write some code that is going to test our application. So like instead of testing everything manually, we are going to have uh, a testing suite that is going to do this for us much, much faster. And having a solid testing suite um, will uh, make you feel much more confident about changing various parts of your code, about performing some effect or adding new features, because in this case you won't be that afraid that you might break some part of your application by rewriting some code or by adding something. So, uh, of course, uh, the main thing uh, that we are going to well, work on are test cases. So, test case uh, is going to contain all the steps, all the conditions and all the parameters to test some specific feature of our application or maybe part of some specific feature. Uh, so, in our test cases we are going to have, of course, some background, so some preconditions to turn our application to some desired state. And then we are going to actually describe our test, so we are going to write the steps um, that we wish to take, so for example, the steps may be uh, logging into the system or maybe posting some comment or adding, I don't know, some other record to the database and so on, so on, so And uh, after we make, um, after we check that the application behaves properly and after this uh, test case finishes, we are going to have some post conditions that is going to turn our application to an initial state. So, for example, we can perform some clean up after our test case has finished its job or something like that. So that's a test case and we're going to write many test cases um, while taking uh, this course. Uh, so the most, uh, I think, uh, the most popular uh, type of test is unit test. And probably unit tests are uh, the simplest ones. So uh, such tests cover um, some specific component of your system. So for example, you can write a unit test that, um, I don't know, tests a class or a module or some other component maybe, or maybe a route and so and so and so. And unit tests are independent and isolated. So one unit test usually covers only some specific um, element of your system. So your unit tests should not rely on each other and usually they are run in a random order so that, uh, well, um, they do not interfere somehow. And we will of course start with writing some unit tests in our course. Uh, the next uh, type of tests is integration test, and integration test, as the name implies, makes sure that individual components of your system behaves or work uh, together uh, as one unit, as a group. So, for example, we can check uh, that the database works properly and that the routing works properly as well. So, for example, you can uh, send an HTTP request with uh, the proper data 
to your application and make sure that this request is actually being handled properly and that some record, for example, is being created in your database. So, for example, you can send a post request to your web application and make sure that uh, a new record is being created. So, in this case, we are testing that the route is behaving correctly, that the database is behaving correctly as well. And another type of test is system test, and uh, sometimes uh, it can be called end-to-end -end test. And such tests, um, they check that the whole system behaves properly. So, for example, we can simulate the user's behavior and uh, perform quite complex manipulations, quite complex operations. Uh, to our system. So we can virtually like uh, simulate how a user interacts with our application, how he visits various pages, how he clicks on buttons, fills in forms, and so on, so on, so So we can make sure that the application is working properly from the user's perspective. And in this course we will also write some end-to-end tests uh, in the upcoming uh, videos. Now some important principles uh, that uh, you should well, remember. Uh, well, my favorite theme is uh, that testing can show the presence of bugs, but never their absence. Uh, so that's a saying by Dijkstra, and it means uh, that even if your testing suit passes, so all the tests are basically green. It doesn't mean that your application has no bugs, basically. Uh, and, uh, well, also, by the way, remember that exhausting testing is impossible as well. So you cannot test for each possible uh, case, for each possible, uh, each possible scenario. It's quite impossible, basically. So you should uh, develop your own testing strategy and try maybe to test some edge cases, test uh, some errors maybe, uh, and so on and so on. So, but you cannot, you cannot test all the scenarios. And of course, it's very uh, advised to start writing your tests as early as possible. Uh, well, there is a concept of extreme programming and, uh, well, as a part of extreme programming, some developers firstly write the tests and only after that they write the actual code that makes these tests pass. I don't think we are going to stick with this strategy in this course uh, for simplicity, but uh, some developers do uh, well, do uh, form this concept of extreme programming as well. So you might uh, meet this concept in some of other maybe courses or books. Uh, well, also, it's quite advice to revisit your scenarios and uh, try to modify your testing scenarios according to system changes. So if you introduce a new feature or if you maybe change some part of your code, uh, try to revisit your scenarios often because otherwise they may not be up to date and they may not test uh, all parts of your application eventually. And also there is a fallacy called absence of errors, which means that I, as developer, see that my testing suite has no errors, but in reality my application does not fulfill all the requirements. That was, for example, well, um, I have probably uh, some person who hired me as a de me as a developer and he asked that the application should fulfill a list of requirements and um, even if my application has no bugs I must make sure that my application actually meets the requirements that were initially set 
so of course don't forget about this as well so i think this is enough theory for now in the next lesson we are going to write code see uh, tdd in action in angular and we will talk more about different types of tests and some best practices but for now let's proceed to the next section and talk a bit about uh, typescript and ecmascript so see you in the next video